Welcome to Business Voice, a program of the Greece Regional Chamber of Commerce. Each month, we'll feature business and community leaders sharing their stories, initiatives, concerns, and passions. Learn practical information regarding community resources and opportunities. Now, the host of Business Voice, Greece Regional Chamber President and CEO, Sarah Lentini. Hi, everybody. You're listening to Business Voice, a program of the Greece Regional Chamber of Commerce, sponsored by Bartolomeo and Prado Funeral Home. I'm Sarah Lentini, your host, as always, and also the president and CEO of the Greece Regional Chamber. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you. We have a wonderful show for you today, starting with my first guest, Wendy Bello, who is vice president and general manager of WROC TV Channel 8. Welcome, Wendy. Thank you very much, Sarah. It's great to be here. It's great to have you on the show. Um, we are, first of all, very grateful to you because you guys are premium members of the Greece Regional Chamber, longstanding members and and now um, it's turning into longstanding premium members of the Greece Regional Chamber. We love working with you and partnering with you. Um, and, uh, you know, the station is a, is an important part of our media landscape, very important. Uh, you're the CBS affiliate, isn't that correct? That is correct. And likewise, by the way, uh, we have had a, a wonderful partnership with the Chamber. Um, and most recently, we had your group at our station um, for a tour and for um, a get-together and networking. It was just, it was really a great time. Oh, that's great. Everybody enjoyed it so much. Um, and uh, and looking forward to doing more more of that and other things that you and I have been kicking around, um, but uh, but the station. Let's start with a little bit of the history. You know, you're you guys have been part of the media landscape forever. It seems to me, right? So, um, how long has WROC TV been in place? I'm kind of dumb about stuff like this, so. You know, do you did you were you sprouted fully born when CBS started or how did how did that happen? You know, actually, um, we are Rochester's first television station. Really? Yeah. And uh, we'll be celebrating 75 years next year. Huge. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Good deal. Yeah. And we are at um, we are located at um, really uh, on Humboldt Street in, in Rochester um, at a historic studios. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we have begun to open up those studios to tours and uh, to community groups and organizations like the Chamber, um, because it's just a gem of it a is. place. Um, in the day, our, our building was actually built to be a radio station, actually Radio hmm. City. And, oh, really? Yeah, uh-huh. a number of radio stations. And um, they built a big radio studio. People would come in, watch the radio shows um, in uh, live. Wow! Um, and uh, we have the original auditorium seating from that time. And now we, we um, welcome groups in to watch the news and uh, from those those same auditorium seats. How very cool! Yeah, and it is a beautiful building. Just if I can chime in, it's it's a uh, it's a charming historic building, and I'm. But it is that sort of you said seventy five years so just in the forties. I the mean, 40s. it was completed. Yeah. The Pike Company uh, ah. built the uh, built the station, and um, in fact, we're in the process of working with them again on some renovations. Very if cool. You're passed by there. You might be questioning why, <laughs> what's with the orange fence? But uh, <laughs> we're working on some things to uh, just to spruce up the joint. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's an ongoing responsibility, and it's a special responsibility when it's an historic place. So mm-hmm. very, very cool. And I did not know that you guys were the first uh, station in 75 years. Congratulations. That's oh, great. Thank you guys going to be having a, a bash, thinking about it, doing a we little are, celebrating? Um, we're in the process of planning that for next year. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's in our name. Rochester's in our name, W-R-O-C. Um, mm-hmm. And then we our website, hence um, our name, RochesterFirst.com, is the station's website. Um, and, uh, you know, as the flagship real station, television station, broadcast television station mm-hmm. in this market, um, it's a source of pride. Yeah. So we want to make sure that, um, the planning has been, you know, it's, it's been in the works for a number of, of months now, and, um, we're really looking forward to it. That's great. And, you know, speaking about history and firsts, um, you know, you're a, a female, uh, general manager of one of our, you know, key key uh, media outlets here in in Rochester, and um, that's not the norm, is it? Uh, it's not a business that's been, you know, overly populated by by female leadership, correct? You know, um, you're right, absolutely. Right now, um, you know, I'm really proud that I am 
the one female uh, general manager in this market. Um, mm-hmm. And um, we have very amazing, talented general managers across across the street at the other competing stations. Um, but I am really proud to be um, a female representing in, in yeah. that capacity. That's great. Yeah, it, you're really a role model for young women who were thinking about going into media and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, that's awfully nice. I imagine that some of the people that are coming to visit are indeed kind of looking at you with some uh, some special interest. And you've been at the station a while, right? Yes, so you you uh, tell me the history of, of, of you, of Wendy Bello. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, so I started at the station in 2007 um, in a sales management role. Um, ironically, a few years prior to that, um, I was working at the Fox station, and um, I got laid off when the Fox station and our station um, entered into an, an agreement, a joint agreement. Um, and I was laid off because I was at the Fox station, and I wasn't at Channel 8. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, full circle, a couple of years funny, later, yeah. I ended up coming back mm-hmm. um, and um, working under an incredible general manager, Louis Gattosi, mm-hmm. Um And... Um, he retired in 2017, and I, I uh, took his reins. And um, but I could never fill his shoes because oh. he was an amazing guy. Well, well um, I, 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 you know, there's room for two amazing people, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think you're. You know, I, I didn't know him uh, particularly, and I know you, and I think you're pretty amazing. So oh. yeah, yeah. Um, and importantly, you get to work with him and uh, get the benefit of his some of his wisdom. Isn't that nice? And now that you're at the helm and you've been there for a little while, um, you know, what sorts of things are you planning? Obviously, a 75th anniversary bash. We got that, right? Yeah. Are you uh, are there directions? I mean, news is changing. The media landscape is changing, right? You've seen just in your tenure, you've seen huge change. Oh, my gosh. Um, just in the past couple of years. Wow. I mean, mm-hmm. um during the pandemic, you know, my my saying was, you know, all things are carved in jello, you know, <laughs> I love um, it. because that's right. what the plans yeah. kind of were yeah. at the time. And, yeah. um, you know, I would I always joke that we would be, you know, let me turn to my general manager, you know, the the global plan- pandemic chapter in my general manager manual to yeah, find right. out what to do next, right, you know. Right, right. So, um, you know, but with with the pandemic and then now coming out of the pandemic, um, just the the evolution of journalism in general and the mm-hmm. newsroom and the mm-hmm. how um, I just think I think there's just an incredible amount of added pressures in our newsroom. Um, and for young journalists starting out, it's it's a, it's a lot to handle. Mm -hmm. Um, So we focus a lot on, um, you know, some of the things that really make our community really special. Um, So, you know, it's not it's not all about the crimes and the, you know, it's really about, um, you know, the people within this community and what we've done to survive and to thrive, you know. And so um, we're coming off of a year where we had the uh, PGA Championship, and we were the official broadcast station for the uh, PGA Championship. Very Something cool. I'm very proud of. Our team mm-hmm. worked very hard. We had a huge set on site. We mm-hmm. were, we were just, we just owned it. It was mm-hmm. wonderful. Um, of course, the official broadcast station for the Buffalo Bills. Very cool. Um, as well, very yeah. Cool. And we're really proud about that. Um, we'll see. How this goes, because, you know, we also have the Super Bowl coming up next Mm -hmm. year. Um, And I'm not going to say anything because there's not enough wood here for me to knock on. But (laughs) I'm I'm very hopeful in that respect. Um, So we've just, you know, we capitalize, not capitalize, I guess we um, we take what's good in our market and the things that uh, that we are able to celebrate about our market. Mm -hmm. And we just like I said, we we just own it. We want to just be all over it and tell the amazing stories. Um, You know, we have we have the eclipse coming up uh, um, April 8th next year. Um, And that's, you know, that's not going to happen again for more than a hundred years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and for anybody who hasn't heard about that, that's there is some. It's a major uh, event, and Rochester is supposed to be an area that's particularly. It's the place, right? We're, aren't we like one of the places to watch this eclipse? It's not going to be equally visible all over the globe, right? Right. In fact, it's not going to be equally visible um, down in Elmira. You oh, know? really? Yeah, just okay. crazy where where you are. So yeah, it's going to be a. Uh, 
um, you know, total mm-hmm. um, eclipse. And so what um, in, in Rochester is actually, I, I, I want to say it's the easternmost city um, that will have that, you know. So yeah. so anybody coming from the East Coast, mm-hmm. you know, Rochester's your first stop. Wow. Um, so it, that's exciting. And there's so many yeah. things going on um, yeah. re, in, involving that. It's Certainly. very exciting. Well, it's a great opportunity for us as a community, absolutely. And how nice that you're, you're uh, part of leading the charge there. So um, as you're, you know, evolving and looking at uh, the landscape moving forward, I'm imagining that you've got some services that you offer to businesses, you know, um, um, I kind of want to get back to the individual story because I'm so glad you're telling the individual story of who's here in the community. You know, I think that's the piece that we really need uh, desperately mm. in the news landscape that I'm worried is going to disappear, by the way. But but um, are you offering services to business? It seems to me that I'm already aware of, you know, some through through your your great it, team members. Right. Yeah. Well, on the sales side, obviously, I mean, um, we have the power of broadcast television mm-hmm. um, and our team, we have a, a team of, of marketing professionals that work with local advertisers um, to create real soup to nuts types of marketing campaigns that will um, either, you know, they'll be geared towards um, really solutions to marketing problems and challenges mm-hmm. that are that our advertisers might have um, or businesses in general. And so um, television is is one element. Mm-hmm. And what's evolved over, we talked about the landscape, what's evolved over the, the past number of years, and it continues to evolve. Um, we're owned by a the largest we're owned by the largest broadcast company in the in the country, mm-hmm. uh, Next Star Media. Okay. And a whole other arm to Nextar is Nextar Digital, hmm. um, and the digital solutions that we have to complement the television solutions that we have um, have been incredibly effective for recruiting, for um, it, product sales, just for um, brand awareness, and um, I mean, you name it, and um, you know. With with digital advertising, you can do anything um, as much as, you know, finding a street level person who, um, you know, is going to high school. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. those are the types of targeting that we can do or some of them might be looking for a job or, um, you know, we also our team does such a great job of, of partnering with um, or, or associating our our, our advertisers or, or um, business partners, I would say, with um, events. For example, mm-hmm. you know, we sold sponsorships to the PGA. Mm. Um, and so businesses that wanted to align with that incredible event, they were part of it and they wow. were a big part of it. Same thing with the Eclipse. Our 75th is coming up next year. And so businesses that have that historic element um, or want to have that type of heritage in the market, they have that association. Those are the types of things that we can offer them as well. That's awesome. So um, businesses that might be looking to get uh, a little bit of help with promotion should definitely think about WROC TV Channel 8 as a potential partner in that. I'm sure you offer a variety of different packages and, you know, I imagine you're tailoring your services to what they need um, and can afford, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, you know, it's we're not. Uh, you, you hear those what, millions of dollars for mm-hmm. the Super Scary. Bowl, you know, that's <laughs> yes. coming up. Well, we have the Super Bowl. We're right, not right, selling right. the millions. You know, right. what it is I, I can't. Even, I don't even know that this year how much it is. It goes up every year. Um, but no, I mean, we we work with all different types of of, of budgets, mm-hmm. um, and um, you know. And we're able to customize things, whether it's on television or on digital or both. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're able to afford, you know, it's affordable solutions um, that can really, really help. Our, our, what our team does really best, I guess, is they understand and learn from the um, from our clients what their pain points are, what their mm-hmm. needs might be. Mm-hmm. And then we fit and create a solution that will address what that is. That's great. Can't ask for better than that. And of course, um, you're a wonderful platform for them reaching, as you mentioned, all sorts of folks and things have gotten so sophisticated that you can, you can really slice and dice and target 
um, you know, uh, and reach exactly who they need to reach or, or want to reach. So that's wonderful. If people want more information about any of what you've talked about today, uh, I know you said the website earlier. What is it again? Rochesterfirst.com. Okay. And um, you can go there at, at the bottom of the site. You, it has contact us. Just you click on that and you can c- contact our sales department or our newsroom. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have, if, if you have a news story mm-hmm. that you want to share, you can call 585-287-8000. Mm-hmm. Um, or just um, if you're interested in contacting our sales department, through the phone, you know, calling, mm-hmm. you can call uh, 585-288-8400, so 8400. Awesome. Um, I just want to say thank you, Wendy, for what you and uh, the whole team over at WROC-TV8 do for the community. Um, we especially appreciate the, you know, the locally tailored coverage, which is so important. Um, I want to thank you for, um, you know, I know that you're helping to promote our upcoming Small Business Awards a luncheon, um, which is on uh, December 7th at Ridgemont Country Club. Uh, and, you know, we're going to be putting a spotlight on, speaking of individual stories, you know, three finalists in each of two categories. One is the Small Business of the Year, the other the Micro Enterprise of the Year. And uh, GRB is our presenting sponsor. And uh, um, uh, Dave Parado is going to be our keynote speaker, Dave of Bartolomeo and Parado. And, um, you know, we couldn't do it without having uh, a media partner. So thank you very, very much. And uh, and I know that you give back in lots of ways to the community. I don't know if there's anything else that you might want to bring up, uh, but, um, but I I do want to say thank you very much. Uh, we we need uh, media partners such as yourselves. You know, we uh, I'm I'm so scared because things are changing so quickly that you know, um, you know, some of what we've had in the past that's been so important. We don't want to lose that. We need you. <laughs> well, so. and likewise, Sarah. You know, we value the partnerships that we have, um, the partnership with the chamber. And yes, you, to your point. You're going to learn more about um, the the event on December 7th because we're going to be a media sponsor for it. We are a media sponsor for it. So we're going to be promoting that. Um, And we're, you know, those are the types of things that will keep, I think, local broadcast television relevant Mm -hmm. uh, because we're talking about the things that are important to our community. And um, you really can't, you know, you can't do that on the national level. Um, and we've got just such a, spe- a special community um, that I'm so proud to be a part of. And um, I'm really proud to lead a platform that can, um, you know, that can tell the stories and share the good things that are happening. And there are so many of them. Mm-hmm. And it's so nice to hear, you know, the general manager of WROC TV saying that because that's that is exactly what it's what. It's what we need. Mm -hmm. Uh, And yeah, uh, it is. It's a great community. It's a really special community. Wendy Bello, Vice President and General Manager, WROC TV Channel 8. Thank you so much for being with us here today on Business Voice. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You're very, very welcome. All right, don't go away. Don't flip that dial. We're going to be right back with my next guest. When someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasure. At Bartolomeo and Prado Funeral Home, the focus is always on how your loved one lived. Bartolomeo and Prado has been helping families create meaningful tributes and celebrating unique lives for three generations. They treat your family like their own, always with the utmost compassion, warmth, and care. When you're in need, call Bartolomeo and Prado Funeral Home 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 720-6000. Depositing your money with Genesee Regional Bank helps strengthen the local community. That's because GRB lends its deposits so the community can grow and prosper. Genesee Regional Bank. Community banking. Community building. Visit grbbank.com. Member FDIC. At Ralph Honda, when you buy a Honda True Certified Pre-Owned Vehicle, you'll drive a car that's passed a rigorous 182-point inspection by Honda Certified Technicians, all backed by a powertrain warranty to give you peace of mind. Find your next Honda at Ralph Honda. Safeguarding your freedoms and your future. The WYSL Stations. Welcome back. You're listening to Business Voice, a program of the Greece Regional Chamber of Commerce, sponsored by Bartolomeo and Prado Funeral Home. I'm Sarah Lentini, your host and also the president and CEO of the chamber. It's my great pleasure to welcome my next guest, Michelle Martell, who is fundraising and donor relations specialist for 
uh, Veterans Outreach Center right here in the Rochester region. Welcome, Michelle. Hi. Good afternoon, Sarah, and thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Um, Michelle, I know that, you know, Veterans Outreach Center has been around for quite a while. And, uh, in fact, we've had you guys on the show before. Uh, but I'm sure there are still some listeners out there who wouldn't mind a little overview of Veterans Outreach Center and what you do. How long have you been around? Let's start with that. So this is our 50th year of wow. serving those who serve us. The Veterans Outreach Center was founded in 1973 by returning Vietnam War veterans. Very cool. Yeah. And 50 mm-hmm. years is a big milestone. Are you guys planning a big bash or, or did we miss it? Well, we are. We have our Stars and Stripes celebration um, that is coming up on Friday, November 3rd at the Convention Center. And we are planning an even more spectacular event this year in celebration of our 50 years. Oh, that's great. So the timing is perfect. November 3rd, come in. Still, still time to buy tickets, I trust, right? Absolutely. You can go right to voclock.org. Um, and you go to get involved in events, and then you can click on a Stars and Stripes celebration, and you can purchase your tickets there. We still have opportunities as well for sponsorships and also for auction items, Mm. and all of the proceeds go to um, help provide critically needed services for local veterans across six counties. Oh, well, that sounds like a very, very good cause. And, uh, and also it sounds like a lot of fun. So um, uh, tell us a little bit about the services. And, um, and, and by the way, does every community have a Veterans Outreach Center, or is this something uniquely Rochester's? Well, you know, my understanding is that not every community has an outreach center, or, you know, they, they vary mm-hmm. um, also community to community on what is offered. I will say that um, there were about seven outreach centers that were begun around 1973 when we were begun, and we are the only one um, that has not only survived, but has continued to expand our services. Hmm. And, you know, so many veterans aren't aware of the services that are available to them here at uh, Veterans Outreach Center at no cost to veterans, and Mm. regardless of branch, regardless of the amount of time that you served, even if Mm. if you were in uniform one day, um, these services that are offered, everything from job training programs to employee, um, excuse me, employment assistance, um, we have mental health support, we have a fitness center, Free haircuts, free massage, free Reiki uh, for veterans. We also have free bus passes and emergency funds and case management that is customized to each veteran and to, um, you know, what their specific needs are. So these are just some of the critically needed services that, again, we offer across six counties. That's what I was going to ask you next. Perfect. Uh, You read my mind. So six counties. Is it sort of Monroe County and... Are there five surrounding counties? What, who's, is, is it all the contiguous counties? How does that work? So, there, so it is the contiguous counties. Um, it includes, um, so yes, Monroe, um, Genesee, Livingston, Ontario, Orleans, and Wayne. Wonderful. So that's mm-hmm. that's a really nice uh, that's a really nice big region, and mm-hmm. I, you know you didn't name every possible service under the sun, but I kind of get the impression that if you're a veteran, and as you said, even if you've just served one day, um, and you've got some question or needs, um, that Veterans Outreach Center is the place to call. Am I right? Absolutely. Oh, and we also have food and clothing. Oh, it's pretty well. big. So, yeah. Yes, absolutely. And we're currently open from. Um, 8.30 until 5, Monday through Friday. But here's something very exciting, Sarah. We are planning um, in the next few weeks, actually, to have a groundbreaking of our peer support drop-in center. Wow. And that drop-in center, that building, um, is planned to be open after hours and to have some hours on weekends um, where we will have staff available, where veterans can gather with other veterans you know, and understanding that a lot of issues 
often happen after regular business hours. So that's another service mm-hmm. that, it, that we are looking to provide here in the near future to that's our veterans. Great. That, that's great. Mm-hmm. And where are you located for the folks listening? Okay, so we are located in the South Wedge area. We are at the corner of South Ave and Comfort Street. Hmm. Comfort doesn't sound like one of the bigger streets, is there? You know, I would say Alexander is yep. the next one. Yep. So Alexander is just like a block east of us. Okay. So most folks know where Alexander is. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's a that's a great location right in the South Wedge. And um, you have a, a building. It's like a you've got quite the office um, set of offices there with lots of lots of staff ready to help veterans, right? We do absolutely. It started as a small house that was given to us um, in 1973, and we've continued to add on to this house and to add on to the services. Um, and and it's quite it is quite larger in size than anyone would expect <laughs> with all of the, right. with all the services. And we also have a kitchen. Um, we have laundry where veterans wow. can come in and do your laundry. In the kitchen, we we offer um, cooking classes for veterans where they could actually get certified. Mm-hmm. That is another service. And about a mile down the street on South Ave, we also have housing for veterans. Nice. And we just op- we just had a grand opening for our flag store right next to the uh, veterans housing as well. And that's down, um, again, about a mile east of where we are, um, also on South Ave. And that's Cypress great. Street. That's, that's the cross great. street. It's and, Cypress. yeah, I imagine that, you know, there are a lot of people that are looking for flags, and it's also a great way if they buy a flag through the Veterans Outreach Center, a great way to support the Veterans Outreach Center, which, as you said, is a way to, to serve and support those who have served and supported all, all of us. Uh, which is so important. So um, how long, we have, talk a little bit about your role. Your uh, fundraising and donor relations specialist sounds like a, a pivotal role for the Veterans Outreach Center. How long have you been there? And, um, you know, uh, what kinds of things are you working on that where maybe the general public can be of help? Oh, okay. Well, awesome. Well, I've been here about eight months now. Okay. And you wouldn't think so. You sound like an old pro. Okay. Because <laughs> you probably are a pro in general, but I mean, you sound like you know the center very well already, so that's great. Uh, thank you. I love it. it. And the mission is just amazing. You know, we're we're all here for the same thing, again, to serve those who serve us. And, mm-hmm. and, and what I do is I work throughout the community um, for support, um, specifically for our special events. Um, so, again, we have sponsorships available. Um, I work with donors for sponsorships, for, um, you know, various donations that they'd like to give for our uh, different events. Um, and we have four main events a year, and I had mentioned our Stars and Stripe event, which is our premier event. And, again, that's November 3rd. But the other thing, too, I do throughout the community that, that appeals to a lot of people is I, um, I coordinate our third-party events. And what those are, hmm. that's with other organizations or indivi- individuals. Um, pretty much they can, if they, if they want to have an event to benefit um, the services um, provided by Veterans Outreach Center, I've had everything from a grilled cheese day to um, <laughs> I love, <laughs> to it. love a, grilled cheese. <laughs> a dress down day to um, golf tournaments to rock concerts and where um, where folks just want to you know donate all proceeds to Veterans Outreach Center and so I coordinate those. You know, we're always looking for people. You, know, you could take your, well, now it's getting cold. I was going to say, take your backyard <laughs> barbecue mm-hmm. and make that, um, you know, a fundraiser. So hmm. those are um, also other ways that I work with the community in benefiting our, our local veterans. That's very cool. Very creative. Uh, good for you. It sounds like you um, you, uh, you folks have not been letting any grass grow under your feet and uh, you know, it sounds as though uh, certainly what you're doing is massively important, but it also sounds as though um, 
you know, you really need help in order to continue to sustain providing all these these services, these needed services for veterans. Um, so I'm hoping that people listening are, are realizing that um, anything that if they want to help, there are lots of ways in which they could be participating. In fact, how if they're interested, if folks are interested either in accessing services, because we have lots of vets in the listening audience uh, or in helping or both, because it's possible to be both a vet and a supporter. Right. So uh, how do they go about reaching you or reaching um, be- reaching Veterans Outreach Center? So a couple of different ways. I can provide the main number um, for veterans to call. Um, and then they can get set up with um, some individualized services, or they're welcome to stop in um, between 8.30 and 5, Monday through Friday. The main number um, for veterans to call is 585-546-1081, and I'll repeat that. It's 585-546-1081, or simply go to our website. You can go to Veterans Outreach Center. Org, or you can go to bachrock.org. Okay. Um, and that lists all of our services there. Um, and then my direct number for sponsorships, for events, for third party fundraising, um, my direct number is 585 295 7824. Again, 585 295 7824. And I can provide my email as well. It's Michelle, but it's with one L. So it's M-I-C-H-E-L-E and then dot and then Martell, M-A-R-T-E-L-L at V-O-C-R-O-C dot org. Beautiful. Um, Beautiful. And I wanted to mention a couple other things that are, that are really fun that we're doing throughout the community as well um, that, that appeals to a lot of folks. Um, we've got a Ticket to Ride fundraiser. There's a vintage Harley motorcycle um, that was donated to us by the widow of a um, a veteran, and we have tickets uh, at 50 each. There's only 200 available, and and we've sold quite a few, and the drawing will be November 11th for this beautiful vintage Harley, and all proceeds go to benefit critically needed services for veterans. And we also have a limited edition bourbon uh, that was crafted for us by Iron Smoke Distillery. And so when you make a $65 donation to Veterans Outreach Center, you'll receive a gift of our limited edition 50th anniversary bourbon crafted by Iron Smoke Distillery. Wonderful. A couple other fun things we have going on. That sounds great. Michelle Martell, Fundraising and Donor Relations Specialist, Veterans Outreach Center, thank you so very much for being with us here today on Business Voice. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. All right, don't go away. We're going to be right back with my next guest. Do not flip that dial. Funerals can be expensive. You may be surprised to learn that you can get Bartolomeo and Prado Funeral Homes five-star service at a price you can afford. They understand one price doesn't fit all and strive to ensure that your needs are met within your budget. Their family of funeral homes are a part of helping to achieve that goal. But above all else, they promise quality service. The details are taken care of so you can focus on what's important. Find out more by calling Bartolomeo and Prado Funeral Home at 720-6000. If you're looking to market and grow your business, make new business connections, and give back to the community in a meaningful way, consider joining the Greece Regional Chamber of Commerce. We're the largest suburban chamber in Monroe County, and we offer networking, education, marketing, insurance, and advocacy. You do not need to live or work in Greece to join. Our members come from throughout the region. In short, we're better together, and together, we're moving business forward. Visit greasechamber.org or call 585-227-7272 to join today. Depositing your money with Genesee Regional Bank helps strengthen the local community. That's because GRB lends its deposits so the community can grow and prosper. Genesee Regional Bank. Community banking. Community building. Visit grbbank.com. Member FDIC. At Ralph Honda, we know car buying has changed, and so have we. Visit ralphhonda.com to value your trade, get instant credit approval, schedule service, even build and customize your next car. It's a whole new way of doing business, online and at Westridge Road. Ralph Honda. Tune in anywhere. Live streaming to PCs and mobile devices at WISL1040.com.
Welcome back. You're listening to Business Voice, a program of the Greece Regional Chamber of Commerce, sponsored by Bartolomeo and Pareto Funeral Homes. I'm Sarah Lentini, your host, as always, and also the president and CEO of the Greece Regional Chamber. I'm really excited to introduce my next guest, a new member of the Greece Regional Chamber, by the way, Roderick Green, executive director of Hillside Work Scholarship Connection, which is an awesome um, awesome agency and program uh, that's been doing all kinds of great work with youth in our community. Welcome, Rod. Sarah, thank you so much for the opportunity to come on the program. Um, I've been a fan of your work for many years, so very, very excited to, uh, one, join the Chamber of Commerce, and two, to talk a little bit about an amazing program that's been in the community for over 35 years, no. Hillside Work Scholarship Connection. 35 Actually, oh, 36 now, Sarah. Really? 30, going in, entering our 36. We started wow. back in 1987. That's amazing. I, I, I mean, I can remember when the program was young because I guess, you know, I guess I've been around a while, too. So anyway, so congratulations. That's awesome. Thank and you. Uh, how long have uh, – well, let's talk a little bit about the program itself, first of all. Sure. Like, how did it get formed? You know, some people are going to be very aware of this, and some people, yeah. some people listening won't know this. So yeah. how so did it get started? The program started, uh, Sarah, back in 1987. Mm-hmm. And at that time, it was started due to a call to action that our former mayor, Bill Johnson, when he was a president and mm-hmm. CEO of the Urban League, put out to the business and the Rochester community to see what could be done to stem the incidence of young people dropping out of high school. And at that point, back in 1987, for the most recently published uh, graduation figure for the Rochester City School District, it found that only 30% of young people that started in the ninth grade completed uh, their education in four years. It also found that the young people that were fortunate enough to graduate didn't have the necessary workforce preparation skills and college readiness skills to really transition into successful pathways post high school. And so... uh, Wegman's Food Market at that time, um, the late Bob Wegman and Danny Wegman uh, really stepped up and said they had an idea that they wanted to pilot. And so the idea was simple. If you could offer part-time work uh, in their stores and the promise of a college scholarship as an incentive or a carrot to complete your education, could you change your trajectory? So Wegman's uh, had a simple um, <laughs> mantra at that time, focus, finish, and celebrate. Mm-hmm. They piloted it with an initial cohort, and they found that their initial cohort of 30 students, 24 of those young people had graduated on time in four years, wow. so 80%. Wow. So that was more than double, almost yeah. triple yeah. that uh, figure at that particular time. And then all of those students either had the promise of full-time employment in the stores, some combination of work and school, or just going right on to, uh, you know, two or four-year institutions. Which is pretty amazing. And so that was, you know, after that first, that cohort, that first 30 students and an obvious success with the first 30, how many students have been served now? What is it you said, 35, almost 36 years later? So 36 years later, we're serving in a variety of communities. Uh, close to 3,500 young people is wow. who we're going to serve this year. Wow. Just and just this year? Just this wow. year. Wow. Um, since our program inception, though, Sarah, we have 9,000 oh uh, students that are graduated, and we count as our, our, our pride alumni. Oh, I would think so. What a meaningful program this is. I mean, I imagine you and you really, um, I would feel very good about getting up every day and knowing that what I was doing when I go to work is helping to really transform lives. Yeah. So it's rewarding. Um, And so, you know, we have transitioned. So um, about halfway through, we transitioned from Wegmans to Hillside um, Family of Agencies or Hillside Children's Center. Mm -hmm. Now, Hillside, many know in the community, Mm -hmm. it's been around now entering its 186th year. Oh, my goodness. So um, and always had that orientation of meeting children where they're at and really building that uh, web of support so that young people can be successful. And that's really what our model is, Sarah. We are in the relationship. Relationship business. And our model starts with a youth advocate, which is a full time individual that has had some experience working with children and families. They're placed right into our high schools or middle schools, and they enroll a caseload of, of up to 35 students that the district has deemed. Um, I'll say the industry term, not my term, Mm -hmm. at risk. Mm -hmm. We like to think of all of our scholars as at promise. Mm -hmm. And it's just providing that additional support so that they'll stay in school. 
um, complete their education and really, again, transition into successful pathways post high school. So it's a, it's not rocket science, as they say. It's meeting a young person where they're at, investing in them. And our, our advocates are mentors. So you think about just all of us are successful uh, today because we had someone who invested in us, someone who saw something in us that maybe we didn't yet see in ourselves and worked to cultivate that. So I was just blessed that I had the school of mom and dad. Mm-hmm. I had really, really good parents, mm-hmm. but also had a, um, a a web of support with uh, my church, mm. with uh, my neighbors, with my extended family. And mm-hmm. that's really what the program encapsulates is providing that support, instilling that hope. And uh, we say failure is not an option. Mm. I imagine... <clears throat> that therefore finding good um, good mentors, good um, work scholarship program advocates. I, I think I'm forgetting the exact name of the role. No, you, you had that, it right. But that, that is okay. But that that's you know um, uh, one of the one of the key things that you have to do and do well and do on an ongoing basis. Right, finding good people to play that role. Um, they're, they're sort of pivotal. They're the, they're the ones in the trenches who are helping young people to feel supported and guided. And um, so is that a, uh, you know, you mentioned churches. Are there, are there go-to places where you have found good uh, work, work scholarship advocates? And is there, is that a way that people who might be listening and might be interested in in playing a supportive role uh, might participate or support? I I have no idea how this works, so you have to help me. (laughs) Yeah, no. um, So I I think you you hit a lot of that, right? So we do active recruitment for open positions. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you that uh, in most of our regions, and I'll speak for Rochester where I'm based, Mm -hmm. uh, we have tenure for our youth advocates that goes up to 25 years. Oh, my gosh. And so um, it's it's that permanency. Mm -hmm. It's the ability to know that if you're a student, you have have that advocate that's going to be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really, again, what the model is predicated on. Mm -hmm. I think like most uh, organizations, uh, you know, coming out of the pandemic, we've also heard about obviously the great resignation. You know, it had been more difficult to uh, find, um, you know, direct service staff that wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, So we've, um, you know, experimented with a lot of different, uh, you know, ways looking at uh, compression, for example, and, you know, making some market-based um, increase to a compensation. Mm-hmm. We have raised the minimum wage on two mm-hmm. occasions. So we went from fifteen dollars an hour a couple of years ago. Now we have moved that to seventeen fifty. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, just a combination of a lot of people don't you know think as much of that in a human service. But you know, talent is uh, is just so key yes. to us to be able to get um, get to our outcomes, which are our best in class. So you know, ninety two percent of the young people that stay with us in our program graduate. And that's in comparison to other urban districts, which that's in the 60 percent. And then our secret sauce, as I've said, is still back to the employment services component. So for the young people that stay in our program, they go through our job readiness training program, which is all on soft skills, getting up, showing up, as my father would say. If they're placed in jobs with our employment partners, that graduation rate is almost 100 percent. So uh, that job is still that carrot or that incentive for our young people to complete their education. And, and move forward. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's. It, it makes it real, which I, I completely understand. What um, uh, since Wegman's Wegman's launched this, um, and you've grown so, having served a, a whopping over nine thousand students at this point, thirty five yes. years later. I imagine there are other companies involved, right, at this point that are offering jobs, and that's part of your job too, getting getting those companies that's true. involved and. Yep. Talk to us a little bit about some of sure. those major players. So Wegmans is still um, our anchor partner. Wonderful. Um, but yay we, Wegmans. Uh, yep, yay <laughs> Wegmans. Um, but we've also, over the years, cultivated other partnerships. So the University of Rochester oh, is another biggie. partner. Yeah, yeah. Um, so coincidentally, I think we have the two largest uh, employers, employers in the Rochester yep. area. Yep. And then also Rochester Regional um, has mm-hmm. been a partner as well. Wonderful. And, and, and retail. So we have fast food. We have uh, small businesses that have um, earmarked jobs for us. So we have over 30 uh, employment partners. Mm -hmm. When I say partners that have just uh, committed um, a job or two or five or 20 Mm -hmm. or 50, thank you, Mm -hmm. Wegmans and Mm -hmm. U of R, Mm -hmm. um, you know, to employing our young people. But um, again, we're not a jobs program, right? It's once young people meet eligibility requirements. So we look for young people to have at least a 2.0 or higher GPA. 
be this at is, least this 15. Is in high school? In high school. Okay, just checking. Be at yep. least 15 years of age and have demonstrated that attitude and maturity that they can handle both going to school, because mm-hmm. you know, graduation is still mm-hmm. the main goal, mm-hmm. and then also handling part-time work. So once those young people have met those prerequisites, we refer them to what's called YETA which, you know, we're big on our acronyms in in, in human service. So Youth Employment Training Academy, and it's 25 hours of job readiness or pre-vocational training that is administered by our program specialists, everything that a young person needs to be successful in that first job. So effective communication, decision-making, punctuality, getting along with your coworkers, diversity, uh, use of technology, Social media, for example, do's and don'ts. And once those young people complete that 25-hour training, it leads to a mock interview process where we have our employers come in. And then those young people will actually apply for the jobs that are available through our partners. They're hired and onboarded. And then we also provide some wraparound support for those young people once they are onboarded uh, for really up to six months to ensure that, um, you know, that's going to be successful. And so um, it is also a value proposition for our employment partners. Because the big thing with employment is turnover, yep. particularly around young people, right, mm-hmm. or just any turnover. And so um, it's a solution to helping businesses not only grow their future workforce, but it also saves money in terms of turnover and retraining costs. So, um, yeah. and, and our young people, um, you know, are sometimes um, in some challenging um, environments. And so the earnings that they're making, it, it's taxable. Mm-hmm. They are now contributing to the economy and really, um, you know, building that track record but also, uh, you know, getting savings for themselves and helping households and families. Oh, yeah. The impact is obviously all interconnected and so powerful. Um, congratulations on, on all of your success. Um, if people are interested in getting in touch with you, it could be maybe if it's, if, you're, if it's a student interested in learning more or a student's family interested in learning more about connecting or someone interested in working for you or Perhaps most importantly of all, somebody interested in supporting the program. I know I know a little bit about health and human services, and, okay. and you're always yes. looking for support, right? I mean, it's Absolutely. not as though it's not as though uh, donors will be turned away. I can't imagine, and uh, this is such an important program. So, how how do they get in touch with you? You have a good website that they could access. Uh, we have a fantastic website. I'll, I'll give a shout out to our marketing department. Nice. It's pretty simple. www.hillside.com. And so you can access there. Um, I'm also pretty accessible myself, uh, nice. rgreen at hillside.com. Um, so any information uh, that you would like, please feel free to reach out to me. We are always looking for more partners, um, job partners, but also thought partners, right? And yep. so uh, the work that we're doing, we're one of many providers here in the Rochester community and other communities that are doing fantastic work. And yeah. so uh, collective impact. We don't say that we have the market on exactly everything that works and produce those outcomes. It's the partnerships that we have. It's the partnerships with employers. It's the partnerships with our school district. It's a partnership with other human service, our elected officials, the county, the city. So um, really to make Rochester great, you do need that collective impact. And how are we working toward the same goal? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, beautifully said. Roderick Green. Executive Director, Hillside Work Scholarship Connection. Thank you for everything you do, and thank you for joining us here today on Business Voice. Sarah, it was my pleasure. Thank you again, and uh, have a fantastic day. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to welcome my next guest, Shane Thomas of Greenlight Networks. Welcome, Shane. Hi, thanks for having me. How are Uh, you? Great. It's great to have you back on the show. I think you were on a couple months or so ago, a few months back. Thanks, Um, Yeah, and Greenlight um, uh, is just kind of taking the world by storm, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Greenlight Networks, uh, tell us a little bit about it, especially for anybody listening and the listening audience who might not know. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. Uh, So I'm with Greenlight Networks. We've been a fiber optic internet company here in the Rochester area since 2011. Um, We're excited to share some updates and some exciting new construction in the Greece area. Oh, really? In the Mm -hmm. Greece area? Do tell. Yes, we have uh, about four or five new districts coming online soon, and we're rapidly growing and uh, installing all around. But um, our Greece, Basil, Marilla, North and South districts are doing really well and are on on track to complete construction soon. 
Um, we also have quite a few others in the North Greece area and are making significant headway in the town hall district as well. Wonderful. Uh, so it's exciting right now to be a Greece resident and, yeah. and get green light soon. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And since many of the folks in our listening audience aren't just from the town of Greece, but from throughout the region, um, how, what is your uh, service area so far? Yes, we have quite a few districts all across Monroe County. Um, we're kind of right up to the Wayne County line right now in mm -hmm. some parts of Ogden, uh, but that's really our, our boundaries right now, and uh, okay. we're hoping to be everywhere soon. So the plan is to come out to places like Livingston County, just thinking about the people listening to the show. And, yeah, uh, hopefully and eventually, other, yeah, yeah, hopefully yeah. eventually we can get our construction team out there, and we're always evaluating new areas, so it's worth it to get those signups in, get your neighborhood involved, and hopefully get green light out to you. Yeah, I know people have been excited, uh, feeling that you know you were offering a great product at a great price. Can you just talk a little bit about the sort of the value proposition? Yeah, what is making people you know come come to you guys? In, <laughs> Absolutely. In, uh, in Hawaii? Um, so a great part about Greenlight is, you know, it's a consistent, reliable speed. Uh, you get a dedicated fiber line, so it's going to be much faster than traditional cable methods. Um, it is a fiber optic network, uh, mm -hmm. so you're getting a significant uh, boost in speed as well as synchronous speeds. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's where you get the same amount upload as download. Uh, mm -hmm. Most companies only tout the bigger number, usually mm -hmm. download speeds. Okay. Um, but, yeah, it's a great product. Uh, we've had consistent pricing since 2011 as well which I know customers really appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you, I didn't uh, realize. Consistent since 2011. Yes, we've had wow. people on our $50 plan. So it's uh, 50 bucks for 500 megabytes upload and download. Uh, we've had people on that plan since 2011. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really terrific. Mm -hmm. And this is your company's sweet spot, right? You guys offer... Um, yeah, we're just fiber optic internet. Uh, that's how we're able internet. to keep the speeds consistent and the prices low uh, is that we specialize in fiber optic internet and that's really all we bring. Uh, but in exciting news, uh, I know a lot of people look at different streaming services or different options for TV or making the switch. Mm -hmm. um, because we are only internet, uh, we do partner with quite a few other companies and we're excited to announce a partnership with DirecTV. Oh, wow. Uh, so it is a separate service. We just partner with them. You have to make your own account. Uh, but they are offering some great rewards cards and great promotions through our website. Uh, just go to greenlightnetworks.com, click on the TV button, uh, and it'll bring you right to that direct TV promotion that we're running. Oh, wonderful. And again, mm -hmm. that's Greenlight Networks, plural. Yes. Greenlightnetworks.com. Yes. And if my memory serves, because I have been on your website in the past, it's also a good place to see kind of where you are in terms of your construction rollout, too, right? Exactly. We have an awesome interactive map uh, mm -hmm. that will give you construction updates. Uh, as you scroll around and look for your district, uh, you'll see those construction updates. Uh, we try to get those updates to you uh, as much as, as quickly as possible. Sometimes it'll be every month or so. Mm. And um, back in 2011 when you guys started – uh, I mean, who started the company? Is it a private company? Is it a? Yeah, so our founder and president, Mark Murphy, uh, he's been there since 2011, and things are growing and rapidly. And uh, yeah, he's doing a great job. I'll say, my mm -hmm. goodness. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it is privately a privately held company at this point. To my knowledge, to your yes. knowledge, yes. <laughs> okay, but started right here in Rochester, yep, right? right? This here is in a Rochester. locally yep. grown company. It's yep. not a company coming in from you know, <laughs> Chicago or something. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and speaking to that local feel, you know, we have a ton of great local uh, events coming up, mm. uh, specifically on the West side. Uh, we've got a few YMCA partnerships coming up nice. uh, as well as a few Hall community Halloween events. So uh, stay tuned to all of our socials and really come out and see us in the community. That's wonderful. And I know mm -hmm. you guys have been involved, I think, for the last couple of years in the Chambers Health and Home Expo. Mm -hmm. um, I know there were a lot of people that were excited to be able to connect with you there and a lot mm -hmm. of people that signed up for, for um, you know, for Greenlight. Yeah, uh, we're yeah. excited uh, to be a part of it. We're excited to be a part of the Chamber. We appreciate, you know, everything that you guys have done. And, yeah, the Home Health Expo is always a, a great event for us. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be probably doing that again. That was at the mall at, at mm -hmm. Grease Ridge. So. Um, which is a wonderful place for people to be able to walk in and connect with, with all of you. So um, as you kind of look to the future, you're, you're just expanding. I mean, that's really, 
you're not you're 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 doing nothing if not expanding. Right? Yeah, we're always looking for new opportunities, new neighborhoods, uh, and that's why we always tell people it's worth it, even if we're not in your neighborhood yet. Go on, encourage your neighbors to go on greenlightnetworks.com and sign up. Uh, you never know; we could come to your neighborhood as soon as next year, depending on the construction schedule and and signups. Yep, and you're you're also on the east side, just to tell tell folks that I don't know if you're everywhere on the east side of Rochester, but I know you're in some places on the east all, side. All over, yeah, we have quite a few new districts in Pittsford, Webster, Penfield, um, Penfield as well, uh, as, including Arondequoit as well. I uh, actually have an event tomorrow in Arondequoit, uh, educating residents and just allowing residents to come and ask questions uh, over by the town hall. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. And are you offering both um, residential and commercial accounts? Yes. So we are for business right now. Uh, I only handle the residential side of Mm -hmm. marketing, but uh, we do have an amazing team that handles our business accounts. And uh, I would encourage them to also go on greenlightnetworks.com and look at our small business packages. Um, It's a great value, really. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And you, you sound like you're very involved in community events. So does that mean that like other businesses or nonprofits could reach out to you about partnering on some community events and absolutely. how would they go about doing that? Yeah, absolutely. If you have any type of community event or anything you're interested in or um, may want green light there mm-hmm. and have a presence, uh, definitely reach out and let us know. We'll, we'll try any event once usually. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. You're very, mm-hmm. very open and creative and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, and enterprising, uh, fresh, fresh uh, team. So, um, how about you? Your your role is clearly in marketing, and I didn't know this until just now that you're focused on residential marketing. Yes. But um, how you know how long have you been with Greenlight? And yeah, so I'm fairly new with Greenlight. I started in February. Uh, it's been an amazing experience so far. I've been able to uh, go to and be a part of some amazing events, uh, and the mm-hmm. community has been uh, fantastic so far. Greenlight's oh, really easy. Everybody seems to want it. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. that's great. It's nice when you have a product that people, yeah, that really exactly. the product kind of sells itself. But mm-hmm. I know you still have work to do <laughs> right. to get to get the you know to get yeah. the information into people's hands. Definitely. And were you in marketing before this, or did you have a? No, no? I was in sales prior. Oh well, very yeah. relate, certainly complementary. Mm-hmm. In they fact, it, I would think days, it's probably yeah. good to have been in sales. Mm-hmm. I think it probably um, informs your marketing work pretty well. So. Um, as you are looking out to the future, you mentioned you've got some Halloween, Halloween, I never say that word right, <laughs> yes. uh, parties or, or events coming up. Are there any events that you want to spotlight for folks yeah, so coming com- into, say, October, November? Yeah, so later on uh, in the week, we have the Arondequoit Fall Festival, uh, which we'll have a presence at, uh, as well as the Gates Community Halloween, I believe, is the 20th. I don't want to be wrong, so I'll have to double check that for you. But uh, yeah, lots of events out here um, on the west side and east side, uh, really all over Rochester. So stay tuned to our socials and um, we always promote it and let us know you're coming. Wonderful. And uh, one last time, let's give everybody your website to check out, um, you know, events and other things on. Yes, it's greenlightnetworks.com. Or you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Greenlight Networks. Greenlightnetworks.com. All righty. Uh, Shane Thomas, Greenlight Networks, thank you so very much for being with us Thanks here today on Business Voice. Oh, you're very Thanks. welcome. You've been listening to Business Voice, a program of the Greece Regional Chamber of Commerce, sponsored by Bartolomeo and Parado Funeral Homes. I'm Sarah Lentini, um, your host, also the president and CEO of the chamber, and I am um, just uh, wanting to thank our guests for today's program, starting with Wendy Bello, Vice President and General Manager, WROC TV 8, Michelle Martell, Veterans Outreach Center, Roderick Green, Executive Director of the Hillside Work Scholarship Connection, and of course, Shane Thomas from Greenlight Networks. We hope you tune in again, and in the interim, check us out on the web at greasechamber.org and be well. You've been listening to Business Voice. The Greece Regional Chamber of Commerce serves businesses, nonprofits, and individuals throughout the region, focusing on promoting economic and community development and serving as the voice for business. The Chamber offers networking, education, advocacy, community events, and business services. It serves as an important platform for business leaders and citizens to come together in support of common goals. 